always knew you were a star. I was nervous, but once I heard the whistle, I was off, Professor. Like a bullet. Yes, Professor. Well, kids, if you were wondering what we are talking about, then wait no more. I, Professor Total Singh, is proud to introduce to you a new 100 meter race champion, my little assistant, Kelsey. Thank you. Kelsey, next win should be the 200 meter race. That will be tough. Well, you have the stamina, just pump it up a notch. I'm going to practice hard, Professor. By the way, who decides the lengths for these races? Well, I don't know who decides the length or distance for the race, but Mathemagic can definitely tell you how to measure that length. Ah, that will be great. Let's begin, Professor. The SI unit for length is meter. The symbol of meter is lowercase m. 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. But shorter lengths are not measured in meter, it is measured in centimeter or millimeter. 1 centimeter equals 10 millimeters. The meter is used as the SI unit of length in many countries. But how can we ensure that the meter used is the same everywhere? For this, we need one special meter everybody can refer to. This is called the standard meter. The standard meter is made up of a special metal bar kept at a fixed temperature. One meter is the distance between two marks on this bar. The original standard meter is kept in France. Other countries have a copy of this meter. The accuracy of any other meter rule can be checked against these standard meters. What you can see on the screen is a meter rule. It is used to measure shorter lengths. Longer distances are measured with the help of a measuring tape. Both the meter rule and measuring tape have marks dividing them into centimeters and millimeters. The smallest division is therefore one millimeter. It means that the meter rule and the measuring tape are accurate to 1 mm or 0.1 cm. Take a close look at the visual. To find out the reading 52.8 cm, note that we cannot consider the reading as 52.83 cm since a meter rule is accurate only to 0.1 cm and not to 0.01 cm. Professor, Yesterday, we went for a drive on the Jaipur Highway. There, I found that distance of various places were written on the side. How were they measured? They are called milestones, Kelsey. Kids, besides milestones, a location map also has a scale chalked out that tells us the actual distance between two places. Hmm, I have seen that in my atlas, but I don't know how to read them. Well. Come, let's learn with Mathemagic how to read the distance scale on a map. The actual distance between two points on the ground can be obtained by making use of the scale shown on the map. The actual distance could be in centimeters, meters or kilometers, depending on the scale of the map. Here are the steps to be followed in measuring the distance between two points on the map. Use a ruler to measure the length between two points, say the hotel and mosque on the map. We can see that the straight line distance between the hotel and the mosque on the map is 4 cm. To find the actual distance on the ground, place the ruler on the linear scale. Hence, the actual distance between the hotel and mosque is 2 km. Well, with this knowledge, now you can surprise your parents on your next road trip. What say, kids? You bet. Indeed, you will. But, Professor, using the ruler or meter tape, we can only measure straight distances. What about the lens that are curved? A well thought question, Kelsey. I am impressed. Kids, we can measure curved lines using a thread. You mean a normal thread with which we stitch? 
Exactly. But it has the measures on it. Patience, my dear Kelsey. Math magic will tell you how. Let's measure the length of a given curved line AB using a thread. Put a knot on the thread near one of its ends. Place this knot on the point A and hold it down with the forefinger. Now, place a small portion of the thread along the line. Keep it taut with the help of the four fingers. Now, move the four finger a little further from A so that it takes the position of the other four finger. Again, place a small portion of the thread along the next portion of the line. Go on repeating this process till the other end B of the curved line is reached. Make a mark on the thread where it touches the end B. Now stretch the thread along a meter scale. Measure the length between the knot and the mark on the thread. This gives us the length of the curved line AB. The length of a curved line can also be measured with the help of a divider. Open the legs of the divider to cover some convenient distance, say 1 cm. Place one leg of the divider at one end A of the curved line. Put the other leg on the line. Repeat the process and count the number of times the divider has to be taken along the line to cover the entire length of the line AB. At the end, some portion of the line may be left out. Measure it separately by adjusting the divider. Multiply the number of complete steps by the distance between the two legs, that is, curved part, which is equal to 1 cm. Multiplied by 10 is equal to 10 cm. Now add the length of the remaining distance to this length to find the total length. So the left out part is equal to 0.5 cm. Therefore, the length of curved line AB is equal to 10 plus 0.5, which is equal to 10.5 cm. Measuring lengths doesn't seem very tough, Professor. Yes, if you understand the process, then it's certainly a piece of cake. Professor, see what you did. What? You diverted my attention. Now I'm hungry. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Answer this and you will be back on the study track. I'm ready. Okay. Tell me how long is the coastline of Britain? How would I know that, Professor? This is cheating. You tricked me. <laughs> okay, okay. But aren't you curious enough to know how such long lengths can be measured? Now I am. Very well then. Do you know? To measure the coastline of Britain or any other coastline, a ruler cannot be used as it cannot give exact measures in its findings. Wondering why? Well, that's simply because if we decrease the size of the ruler, though the measurements might become accurate, but the coastline length to be measured will increase without limit. So what do we do? The solution lies in fractal geometry, the geometry of universe. The coastline is an example of a fractal, which is nothing else but a broken up geometric shape, each shape being reduced size copy of the whole. Whatever the zoom level, the fractals look the same. And with this very fractal dimension of the coastline, we are able to measure its exact length. Ah, that was a lot of learning today. So now it's time to revise, isn't it, Professor? Right. So here is the recap. In this module, we have learned that Length of a line segment can be measured using meter scale, tape or divider. Units of length are meter, centimeter, millimeter. In the maps, a scale is used to represent large distances. Curved lines can be measured using a thread or a divider. Sir, how about an actor? You keep saying I am smart and intelligent. 
My friends think I'm good looking too. Well, you can be a good comedian. You definitely are a funny character. Comedian? Hmm. There he goes again. Kids, Kelsey is off to his dream world. I guess we are the only sensible ones here. So why don't we also call it a day and meet again next time for another exciting episode of Math for Juniors. Till then, you all keep smiling and be good. Bye.